going on, guys? Thank you so very much for joining me right here on Off The Script. It is Saturday, March 7th, 2020, and this is episode 316, part number two, and I promise, I promise I have a much lighter show today. Yesterday's show went almost two and a half hours. I never know when to shut up, man. I usually pack a lot into the Friday show, but I promise I have a lighter show today. Lighter, but big. I got a lot of stories about WrestleMania and the big one. And the big one. I know a lot of people were reaching out to me because you all know I'm a big fan of Shayna Baszler. And the reported news that came out on Friday is that Shayna Baszler right now might be out of a WrestleMania spot. Vince McMahon reportedly is already souring on Shayna Baszler. I don't know why. Actually, I do know why, but I don't know why this guy, Vince, has not been actively removed from his position yet. I really don't understand the logic behind any of this. It seems like Vince is actively trying to sabotage WrestleMania. It feels like, and I might be the only one feeling this in this particular situation, but I feel like after last year's WrestleMania, Vince gave us what we wanted. We wanted Kofi Kingston. We wanted Seth Rollins. <laughs> We wanted Seth Rollins, man. How stupid did we look? How stupid did we look? We wanted Kofi. We wanted Seth Rollins, believe it or not. And we wanted Becky. And we got all three of them last year. Unbelievable. We got Seth over Roman. We got Becky over Charlotte Flair. And we got Kofi over Daniel Bryan. And this year, I know somewhere within the last calendar year, I know I said it. Vince gave us what we wanted last year, and this year it's going to be what Vince McMahon gets. That's why Charlotte won the Royal Rumble this year. That's why Roman's in the main event of WrestleMania this year. And I would not be surprised if Ronda Rousey somehow is in that match with Becky Lynch this year. It's unbelievable, man. So we're going to go over that big story. Shayna Baszler right now falling out of favor with the chairman of the board, Vince McMahon. I also got news on Daniel Bryan's reported WrestleMania opponents. We'll go over that as well. I also got news on the original plan for The Fiend and Goldberg and why WWE changed their minds last minute. I got the official report on why we are getting what we are getting. Also, Goldberg says fans that are upset at him being the universal champion are the minority. I'm glad Goldberg has convinced himself of this farce. Awesome. And why did Goldberg come back? That's going to be even more laughable when I go over why he said he came back. Also, Paul Heyman helping out with two feuds Going into WrestleMania, what are they? We'll go over it. And I got the plans for Kevin Owens also on top of the Daniel Bryan plans, plans for Kevin Owens at WrestleMania. Again, thank you guys so much for joining me. I am JD. Hit that subscribe button down below and turn on that bell for all notifications. If you guys missed the podcast yesterday, you guys know where to go check that out. Link is down below in the description of this very video, along with Monday Night Raw, NXT, AEW Dynamite, SmackDown, and probably my favorite upload of the entire week, the Final Fantasy demo walkthrough gameplay for the demo that was released. I can't wait for it. So make sure you guys go and check all that stuff out. Links are down below in the description of this very video. Follow me on social media, at JD from NY206. That is on Twitter, and Instagram, and if you guys want to support the podcast via Patreon, you guys know how to do that as well, patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Thank you to all the new patrons 
Uh, as of yesterday, you guys wanted to hear off the script so badly that I had a ton of signups yesterday. So thank you guys so much. Uh, and you get early access for off the script when you're on the Patreon page. Today's podcast is brought to you by The Ridge. Ridge.com slash script. Use code script at checkout for free shipping and 10% off. A programming note. I will be live. I will be live, 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 live streaming tomorrow afternoon around 1, 1 1.30. We will be going over the Elimination Chamber preview and predictions. Now, I know a lot of you guys didn't even realize that there was a pay-per-view on Sunday night. It doesn't feel like a pay-per-view. It feels like a really amped up version of Monday Night Raw. But I will be live on the channel around 1, 1.30 on Sunday afternoon. We'll be taking Super Chats. We'll be talking about the Elimination Chamber. We'll be going over the card. Predictions and all the news coming out of the SmackDown and Raw shows heading into the Elimination Chamber. So make sure you guys are aware of that and set your calendars and your times and your clocks and your iPhones and your Androids and make sure you join me live on the channel on Sunday afternoon. And of course, I will be here after the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view goes off the air with the full detailed review of the show. So make sure you guys are aware of all of that on your Sundays. Let's get into the show, man. Start off light. Start off light, but funny. Ricochet. You know, the superhero, Ricochet. Ricochet reflects on his current losing streak in WWE. Now, Ricochet has been on a losing streak lately. He is the WWE's resident superhero. If he was a superhero, he should have been killed off already. That's how bad he's been performing on Monday Night Raw. He recently suffered a quick loss. A quick loss with zero offense to Brock Lesnar at Super Showdown in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. So they competed at Super Showdown. He lost in one minute and 30 seconds. This past Monday on Raw, the former United States champion, the former future prospect of the WWE, also a future, or I thought was a future WWE champion, also a former North American champion in NXT, lost. He suffered a loss to the 24-7 champion, Riddick Moss. Riddick Moss, who the Brooklyn faithful were chanting, who are you? The 24-7 championship that Riddick Moss holds was also held by Santa Claus. And Ricochet failed to win a championship that was held by Santa Claus. Gerald Briscoe, Kelly Kelly, Candice Michelle, and Pat Patterson. Even Mike Rome has the 24-7 championship on his resume. And Ricochet, the WWE's resident superhero, couldn't get it done. How sad is that that Ricochet needs to go ask Santa Claus for tips on how to win major championships in WWE? Awesome. Maybe when Christmas time rolls around, Ricochet could sit on Santa's lap and maybe request his release as his Christmas gift for 2020. Hopefully WWE grants him the release because he's going nowhere and fast. So he took to his Instagram account and Ricochet shared a message with his fans. Oh, now he wants to share messages with his fans after he was announced as the number one contender to Brock Lesnar at Super Showdown, where we all knew what was coming. We all knew the fate that was going to befall Ricochet in Saudi Arabia. We all were looking out for Ricochet, yet he goes on social media and blasts the fan base. Aren't you guys happy with anything he says? So now... He's sharing a heartfelt message with his fan base. He says this, and I quote, It's not bad to dream, but you also have to consider what's realistic. Oh, really? We tried to tell you, bro. We tried to tell you. He says, whether you win or lose, looking back and learning from your experience is a part of life. So this quote is reportedly from the anime series, My Hero Academia, 
There you go. Vince McMahon might not be a fan of anime. That's why you are a loser on WWE TV. At last year's Crown Jewel event in Saudi Arabia, Ricochet competed in wrestling gear inspired by one of anime's characters, All Might. What that is, I don't know. If you do know what that is, you're probably a virgin. I'm just saying. At the time of this writing, Ricochet has yet to be scheduled for a matchup at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. He also doesn't have a match at WrestleMania this year. Which, last year, he was a part of a fatal four-way for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. And this year, he will be delegated to the Andre the Giant Memorial. Titus is baking a fresh cheesecake battle royal. Awesome. Ricochet requests strawberry drizzle on that cheesecake, Titus. Please. It's the least you could do for a loser. So, Ricochet is now sending out realistic and heartfelt tweets or Instagram posts, whatever the fuck this guy's doing on social media. He reflects on his losing streak. Bro, bro, listen, I'm telling you this one more time. You better go look Vince McMahon in the eye. You better go look Paul Heyman in the eye and and suck it up and say, you know what, I think I need to be back down in NXT. Clearly the main roster is not for Ricochet yet, but I don't want to go on and blame Ricochet for his losing ways on the main roster. It's WWE's fault. In all actuality, this is WWE's fault. They constantly pull up talent from NXT and the rate in which NXT talent fails on the main roster is absolutely astronomical. It's mind-blowing that you got a guy like Ricochet who any promotion in this fucking world, any wrestling promotion anywhere in this world would absolutely bend over backwards and suck cock for Ricochet's talents. They would do anything to get this guy on their roster. And WWE has this guy and they're wasting him away and they're belittling him and they're cutting him down to be absolutely nothing. He looks absolutely worthless right now in WWE. And he should be in NXT. Again, Adam Cole has spent over two years in NXT. And he's better off for it. Yes, it's getting to a period where Adam Cole, and and this is what I'm concerned about, if Ricochet is failing... On the main roster. This badly. What do you think is going to happen to Adam Cole? This is why I'm so concerned. You know? And I know Triple H made a big deal out of Ricochet. What is Triple H thinking when he looks at Ricochet and what he's doing? And what's happening to him? You know? What is is Triple H going to realistically say? He's going to throw his hands up in the air and be like, I don't know. I would love to know... What is said between Triple H and Vince McMahon when someone like that, that is so heavily touted, comes into NXT, gets called up and fails after Triple H puts so much work into making him look and feel special. As soon as Ricochet had the lasers cut from his entrance, I knew it was doom right from the word go. As soon as they cut that little aspect from him, they humanized him almost immediately. Almost immediately. And this is Vince McMahon, the CEO of this company. He doesn't know anything that's happening in NXT. And the the more important thing is, he doesn't care what's happening in NXT. No matter how Triple H wants to spin it. Oh, Vince McMahon is a big fan of what we're doing in NXT. He doesn't give a shit. He doesn't know anything coming out of NXT at all. Ricochet, yes, he's got things that he needs to work on. But that... Like I said yesterday, this is what the Performance Center and NXT was for. There's no reason why he should be failing this badly on the main roster. No reason at all. He should have been in NXT for two years, just as long as Adam Cole has been there. Work on whatever he needs to work on. This is why it exists. And then somebody from the main roster should deem you ready. Okay, now we can use him. Seems like he's just there and Ricochet felt special in his matches with Gargano and Cole and Dream and teaming with Black. And now on the main roster, he feels like everybody else. Ricochet was top tier in NXT and on the main roster, he's like Shelton Benjamin. 
He's no better than Shelton Benjamin. And that sucks. That is awful. He can reflect all he wants. He's a loser. And I don't think anybody sitting here listening to me wants to see that happen to Ricochet. I don't know what needs to be done, but clearly something is internally wrong in the WWE. You can guarantee that something is internally wrong in WWE because Goldberg beat The Fiend for the Universal Championship. The original plan for The Fiend versus Goldberg and why WWE changed their minds last minute. Now, a report suggests WWE didn't originally plan for The Fiend to lose to Bill Goldberg, but a last-minute thought gave Vince McMahon a shift in his decision. According to multiple reports, nearly everyone in WWE but Vince McMahon hated the idea of having The Fiend losing to Goldberg. But a recent report suggests McMahon might have a sound reason to book the loss. Original plans for The Fiend were not for him to lose. He was to go on to WrestleMania 36 as the Universal Champion and face either Roman Reigns or John Cena. As per the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Wyatt was actually supposed to bulldoze through everyone on his way to WrestleMania 36. Obviously, things changed. Apparently, the reason they changed is Roman Reigns. And now the Roman Reigns agenda is showing and rearing its ugly head once again. Vince was reportedly worried Roman would be booed out of the building if he became the challenger for the Universal Championship and won it over The Fiend. Knowing that the title was on The Fiend, Vince feared that Roman was going to get booed out of the building. So knowing that taking the title off The Fiend wasn't a popular decision, Having Goldberg get booed instead made more sense as Vince wants Roman to stay babyface that fans actually want to cheer for. Meanwhile, Goldberg is a short-term placeholder and WWE doesn't lose much having him be a polarizing figure. And if Goldberg isn't well-received, Roman's win will be something fans look forward to. Oh, really? So Vince... So what Vince thinks... What Vince thinks is what I had assumed anyway before Vince thought it. What I had assumed was exactly what Vince was thinking before it was reported. Now, I get where they're going with this. But the Roman agenda clearly is going to wipe away all the goodwill that Vince McMahon and the WWE have done with Roman Reigns. Roman was actually looking a little bit more watchable. Not with his feud with Baron Corbin, but he was looking a little bit more watchable. When Roman was on TV, it wasn't as nauseating as it was in the past. So I ask if, and this is the direct fucking effect. This is the direct effect of not thinking long term. Look at what they're doing in the midst of WrestleMania season. If you thought about this, If you thought about this, and it goes back to well before Hell in a Cell, if you thought about unleashing the fiend the way that he was, if you seen the reaction that he got at SummerSlam when he came out for the first time and we seen the fiend's character as he demolished Finn Balor, you should have known right then and there what was going to happen. You should have knew what was going to happen with the fiend and the way the character was going to be in the eyes of the fans, how it was going to take off. This is why WWE sucks. This is why WWE going into WrestleMania, every single year they don't know what to do. They don't book or plan long-term. If you had a long-term vision, if you were actually... If you were actually watching what you were doing on TV and listen to the fucking fans and gauge the reaction of who you got on your TV program, you would have known this was going to be a thing come April. But what did WWE do? They gave The Fiend the World Championship. They gave Bray Wyatt the Universal fucking Championship. And they had no idea what they wanted to do at all going into WrestleMania. So if you had any idea that you wanted Roman to win the championship at WrestleMania, then I think you should have 
guessed logically and listened to your fans that maybe Bray Wyatt having the Universal Championship wasn't the right idea. So not only did you take Bray Wyatt's momentum in that shit feud that you had with Seth Rollins, then you killed him completely at Super Showdown, and now he's not worth anything going into WrestleMania. So you did what you did without thinking, and now come WrestleMania, you purposely killed the Fiend to the point where he is absolutely worthless to anybody on WWE TV. He's just another act. All for what? Because you want Roman Reigns to be the universal champion? So what did Vince do? He thought that having Bray Wyatt as the universal champion versus Roman Reigns and have Roman beat Bray Wyatt was going to get Roman booed. Now what you did was take the title of the most over guy in the company, put it on somebody that does not deserve it in the eyes of the fans, and now what you did is cause this match to have such a negative feel around it that no matter what you're thinking, Goldberg's going to be booed, Roman's going to be booed, the match is going to be booed, and Roman winning the Universal Championship in a predictable match is going to be booed out of the building. What you did was think, and you thought that you were doing the smart thing, but in actuality, what you did was all... You, all you did was go back to the original fear you had, and it's now rearing its ugly head in this new vision that you had with Goldberg and Roman Reigns. So what did you do? You killed the fiend for no reason because you're right back to what you feared most. And you sacrificed the fiend because why? Because why? You had Roman, Roman, Roman on your mind, and you didn't think that, well, if we take the title off, Bray Wyatt and put it on Goldberg, yeah, it's going to go over and Roman's going to be cheered, but it's in actuality going to end up the same way that you thought with Bray Wyatt as the Universal Champion. Roman was going to get booed any which way. It doesn't matter if it was against Wyatt or Goldberg. It doesn't matter. So the original plan that you had was the one you should have stuck with. Or in my eyes, Roman shouldn't have even been challenging for the Universal Championship at WrestleMania. Why does Roman have to challenge for the Universal Championship at WrestleMania? I I sound like a broken fucking record. I sound like a broken record. Goldberg, if you wanted a big name at WrestleMania, Goldberg and Reigns didn't need a world championship. You got a big name in Goldberg, A, and B, you got a premise for a match, Spear versus Spear. That's all. Some cheesy fucking catch line would have been good enough to get that match in the eyes of the casuals as a big spotlight WrestleMania match, especially if you want to sell this shit to ESPN and sell the rights to the pay-per-view. Wyatt, on the other hand, is now going into WrestleMania absolutely worthless, whereas if he was the Universal Champion going in and he was defending the title against John Cena, the story of the uh, of the seventeen. The number 17, John Cena going after 17 against Bray Wyatt, who's looking at John Cena, who beat him at WrestleMania 30. A guy who ruined his career, per se, coming in as Universal Champion, looking for revenge, trying to stop John Cena from doing it again and getting that number 17 beating Ric Flair's record. That's the story. So what's the story now between these two matches? You got one, Bray Wyatt looking for his win back. Who the fuck cares if he's not the Universal Champion? Meanwhile, you got Roman Reigns and Goldberg. What's the story? Why does that story need the Universal Championship? There's no story there to begin with. Now you're adding the Universal Championship with no story involved, and it just seems like a desperate attempt to get Roman Reigns over and push the Roman agenda again. They fucked up. They fucked up. Vince might not think he fucked up, but he fucked up. And I'll be watching with my Becky Lynch fucking sunglasses on, and I'll be laughing when I see this main event at WrestleMania, and I hear the fucking crowd reaction to this shit, and I hope they tear that fucking stadium down to the ground. I really do. I really do. I don't know one fucking person with a brain that is excited for Bill Goldberg versus Roman Reigns. I don't. I don't. Now... The plan, obviously, is The Fiend and John Cena. So the plan now is that The Fiend may clash and get his revenge. We, we don't even know that. If WWE is this, if they are this stupid to have Bray Wyatt go into a match with Bill Goldberg and lose in three minutes, why does anybody think he's going to beat John Cena? 
WWE is already giving you worry that John Cena is going to beat Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. They haven't given us any hope that they're going to do the right decision. Look what they did at Super Showdown. So, he may or may not get his win back over John Cena. So, WWE apparently is going to have this match, hopefully do the right thing, and to them, they're going to rebuild Bray Wyatt. I mentioned this yesterday. This is what they do. They take the most popular guy. They didn't anticipate Bray Wyatt being the most popular guy, but he must have been so popular that it went against everything that they had planned or everything that they hadn't envisioned, and they want to cut him down and build him up in his own in their own image instead of his image, instead of his ideas for the, for the character. That's what they do. They don't want anybody succeeding on their own. They want to control everything. Vince wants to control everything in the WWE. Now, it's still possible that we will get a program with Reigns and Wyatt. So what is the difference if you do it now or then? If you do it now, Vince thinks Roman's going to be over. He's not. And what's going to happen when eventually Roman crosses paths with Bray Wyatt? What you fear is only going to rear its ugly head anyway. Vince thinks Reigns is going to get cheered in WrestleMania against Goldberg, winning the championship. And he took the title off of Bray Wyatt because he don't want Roman Reigns to be booed. But what happens when Reigns eventually crosses paths with Bray Wyatt? It's only going to happen anyway. You cannot avoid the inevitable. I said it on SmackDown last Friday. Stop. Stop fighting against what is inevitable. Roman is going to get booed. Embrace it. Embrace it. You cannot outrun it. It's like Final Destination. Ever watch the fucking movies? Final Destination? You cannot outrun death. Roman is going to eventually get booed. Stop. Just stop. It makes yourself look ridiculous. Vince has proven to us with this situation that he does not know a goddamn thing anymore. This is the one thing that you can look back on and think, man, WWE really doesn't listen to their audience. It's awful. It really is. So what's going to happen? Bray and Roman. Bray's eventually, I would hope so, per storyline, Bray's eventually going to want the world championship back. He's got issue with Roman Reigns. Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns have history with the Wyatt family in the Shield. He took out Rollins. Why wouldn't he naturally go after Roman Reigns? He'll want to do to Reigns what he did to Rollins. So eventually they're going to cross paths. And what's going to happen? WWE, man, oh man, this is shaping up to be, in my eyes, this is shaping up to be one of the worst built WrestleManias in the history of WrestleMania. And WWE has nobody to blame but themselves. Goldberg, speaking of Goldberg, he says fans that are upset at him beating Bray Wyatt for the Universal Championship are the minority. Really now? Because I know the Super Showdown review was the biggest review I did. I don't even know since when. Shit got nearly 4,000 likes. None of my videos get 4,000 fucking likes. None. Every poll I've seen on social media, every fucking outlet that does pro wrestling up and down YouTube, up and down the internet, shit all over this decision. So exactly where are we the minority here? I'm glad Bill Goldberg has now finally convinced himself in the middle of this WrestleMania season that this is the right creative decision. And it goes back to what I said on that Super Showdown review. After what I read to you here, that cannot be any more true. Goldberg is the universal champion. There were plenty of detractors in this booking decision. Macaulay Culkin. He's not really a big name movie star nowadays, but even he canceled his WrestleMania plans after Goldberg's title win. Goldberg returned fire on social media, calling Macaulay Culkin a dork. Now, while speaking to The Bump, which is absolutely in itself cringe to watch, Kayla Braxton's fine, but the rest of the fucking clowns on that show, my God, it is nauseating to watch. I only watched this last episode because Sasha Banks was on, and she was actually talking about House of Glory and The Amazing Red, and there were... Clips of both of them being shot this past week at the House of Glory School at the NYC Arena. 
and they were training together, and Red was obviously there because he trains the students at House of Glory, and Sasha was there, and everything was being filmed for this particular episode of The Bump. That's the only reason why I watched it, to see what was filmed and, and to see what Red had to say about Sasha coming back and just getting in there to train. And I love when she comes through the school. It's just a great thing to see because it, it shows you how much she loves what she does. Now, Goldberg was on the bump this week. Goldberg opened up about the people who aren't happy about his big win. He says he he isn't going to let what he considers a minority of the fan base stop him from doing his job. He says this, and I quote, You can listen to the detractors if you want, but I like to think that they're a minority, and in the end, the true wrestling fans will appreciate what I'm putting myself through so I can try to put a smile on somebody's face and be a superhero. But Bill Goldberg is not a superhero. Bill Goldberg is being portrayed as a guy who took yet another WrestleMania spot away from one of the younger talents in the company, a much more deserving spot that belonged to Bray Wyatt, Goldberg now has in the palm of his hands. So I mentioned on the Super Showdown review that imagine being Bill Goldberg. Walking into Super Showdown, you're already being paid more than anyone else not named Brock Lesnar on that show. You're already coming in with a Hall of Fame status on your resume. You're making at least two mil to show up in Saudi Arabia to have a five minute or less match in front of these fucking people because of the name that you built for yourself in this industry based off two fucking moves. You got a jackhammer and you got a spear. That's all Bill Goldberg is known for. And he made a career for himself, a career that people would die for off of virtually nothing. Nothing. Goldberg was called two weeks before Super Showdown to come on in and feud with Bray Wyatt because they needed a big name. They didn't have any other name outside of Lesnar and The Undertaker to show up in Super Showdown. So they give Bill Goldberg the rundown, they give him a a paycheck, and his opponent is Bray Wyatt. Bill Goldberg, instead of doing what is right, this is what I don't understand. Bill Goldberg is someone that I never looked at as somebody who cares about the wrestling business. He said it himself, he doesn't watch, he doesn't care about the wrestling business. The only reason why he came back was because he wanted his son to see him wrestle. He didn't give a shit about anything else. And what did they do? They took care of him like royalty. His son got to see him wrestle, and they put him in the ring with somebody who he knows on a personal level in Brock Lesnar. Goldberg only came back not for the love of the business, but for the love of his son. Fine. Fine. If that's all you wanted to do, you you got that. You got your dream to have your son see you wrestle. That's it. There's nothing more for you to do. Imagine being Bill Goldberg in 2020, who's accomplished everything in this business, who's a Hall of Famer. His son got to see him wrestle. Imagine getting that phone call from Vince McMahon. Hey, Bill, we need you for Super Showdown in Saudi Arabia. We're going to put you against The Fiend. Bray Wyatt, and you're going to win the Universal Championship. You think Bill Goldberg knew who Bray Wyatt or The Fiend or what The Fiend was walking into this match? Probably not. Had to do some Google magic. Had to look up some YouTube videos and see what the fuck The Fiend is or what Bray Wyatt is doing nowadays. I guarantee you he didn't even know who Bray Wyatt was. You think after all that Bill Goldberg did to maybe prepare himself for this match in the two weeks that he had? Maybe. Bill Goldberg would say, you know, Vince, I don't really feel right coming on in and taking a universal championship away from some guy that you've been building up for all these months going into WrestleMania. I think the younger guy needs the WrestleMania rub. I think the younger guy should go into WrestleMania as the universal champion. Don't you think if Bill Goldberg was a is a selfless individual, he would have said that to Vince or any of the suits in WWE? Don't you think if Bill Goldberg actually loved this sport and loved the WWE and looked out for the fucking future of the company that he would have been selfless in thinking and saying, you know, I think Bray should go into WrestleMania. 
as Universal Champion. Don't you think Bill Goldberg, with the status that he has in the company, don't you think he's got some kind of political pull? Don't you think if he went to Vince McMahon and was very adamant about this, that they would have potentially listened to him? He didn't say a fucking word. He didn't say anything. He gladly took the money. He gladly took a WrestleMania spot. He gladly took the title off of someone that should be in that position. For what? For what? For no reason at all. Now he showed the world and he showed everybody in the community how selfish he really is. Why did Bill Goldberg need another Universal Championship? Why did Goldberg need another WrestleMania moment? There's no bigger moment for WrestleMania, for, for Bill Goldberg, than the WrestleMania in which his son seen him wrestle Brock Lesnar as the Universal Champion. So why does he need to be here now? This is what I don't understand. Don't you think if Bill Goldberg cared, he would have said something? Now we're looking at this shit, and Goldberg, Goldberg just proved to everybody that what I said was 100% correct. Now, instead of doing what is right, now he's justifying the action. Now he's shitting on us as if we're wrong. As if our opinion is wrong. Now he doesn't give a shit. Oh, they're a vocal minority. I'm just here for whatever reason. I'm here to show everybody that I'm a superhero. I, I want to put a smile on somebody's face and be someone's superhero. Yeah, sure. I'm glad you convinced yourself of that, Bill. You can listen to the detractors if you want. Why are we detractors? Why are we detractors? Because we look at things in a realistic manner. Oh, I'm sorry. We can't take the spotlight away from good old Bill Goldberg. He's 53 years old. When I think of WrestleMania, I certainly don't think of fucking Bill Goldberg. Give me a break. My buddy Jesse said it best. He hates this situation. And... Every time I mention this, he gets sick to his stomach. He really does. He even told me a couple of days ago that he still can't believe that Bill Goldberg is the Universal Champion and how little Bill Goldberg cares about the business and cares about what he's doing and how little he's done to even warrant a decision like this. He went on and said, and I, I don't like him, but it's very difficult to not agree with him. He said, Baron Corbin deserves to be Universal Champion more and deserves to walk into WrestleMania as Universal Champion more so than Bill Goldberg. And we all universally hate Baron Corbin. Imagine Baron Corbin being on TV and being on TV every week and being there at every live show and doing what he's got to do for the company every single day, every single week. And potentially, he now is out of a spot at WrestleMania. I don't really understand why everybody is on... Well, who, if you are on Bill Goldberg's side, why you're on Bill Goldberg's side. You're looking at it for all the wrong reasons. WrestleMania doesn't need Bill Goldberg. WrestleMania would have been fine without Bill Goldberg. So he says, and I quote, they've kind of painted me in a corner of being a heel on this one, but I'm just me. It is what it is. No, you're a heel because you came in undeservedly and you took the title away from somebody that we wanted to be the Universal Champion going into WrestleMania. That's why you're the fucking heel. You're the heel for the wrong reasons. You're the heel because nobody respects you. You fucking kidding me? You're not the heel because this is the way things were supposed to be. You're the heel because you're not supposed to be here. Nobody wants you here. Goldberg and Roman Reigns more than likely will be the, the main event of WrestleMania. I, there's no way Vince McMahon is not thinking this match is going on last. I, if anything, Brock Lesnar is going to go on first. If anything, Brock Lesnar and Drew McIntyre will open the show, just like Rollins and Lesnar opened the show last year. So we'll have to see what happens at WrestleMania. And he also said... This, this is even more funnier, Goldberg. He said this in the same uh, bump episode. He says he's waited so long to get in the ring with Roman Reigns. Apparently, all it took was Goldberg discovering that a Georgia Tech alum was using his spear. Roman Reigns has been using the spear for seven years now. Now, you're just realizing that Roman Reigns is a Georgia Tech alum and he's been using the spear? Is this what they're trying to tell me now? Go 
Goldberg credits that match for the reason he returned this time around. Goldberg is crediting his desire to wrestle Roman Reigns as the reason why he came back. Are you fucking kidding me? I came back for a reason and that's why I came back. Roman Reigns has been in my sights ever since. What, since three weeks ago? Since three weeks ago. You know, I heard that a Georgia Tech alum does this spear. I heard that I heard he played for Georgia Tech and he does the spear, period. It doesn't go any further than that. I love Roman to death. I greatly appreciate what he's able to do outside the ring. I'm one of his number one fans. There's no doubt about it. There's no animosity there. I have a job to do. Baby face, heel, I don't give a damn what it is. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to rip his face off like I do everyone else. Uh, You rip your face off at Crown Jewel against The Undertaker, right? Right? I remember that. One of the worst moments in WWE history. This is a fucking sham. Everything about this match is politically driven. And I hope to God that Tampa Bay and Raymond James Stadium shits all over this match. I really do. Go ahead. Put it on last. I guarantee you, put it on last. After everyone's been sitting in the fucking heat for eight hours and this is the last thing that they see, I hope that they fucking tear this stadium down to the goddamn ground. I said it on Friday and I'm going to continue saying those same exact words until we get to WrestleMania. This is fucking pathetic. I am so glad Bill Goldberg took the money and then convinced himself that everything that the company was doing was the right decision, knowing He was in the wrong for four straight weeks now. Garbage. Absolute garbage. Roman versus Goldberg at WrestleMania. Paul Heyman will be helping book and produce the feud and the match going into WrestleMania. So on Friday's episode, not this this last Friday, not yesterday, but the, the previous Friday, Roman Reigns confronted Universal Champion Goldberg to set up a match at WrestleMania 36. I'm next, he says. That's all he had to say. I'm next. And poof, he's got a fucking title match at WrestleMania. Meanwhile, Drew McIntyre had to go win the Royal Rumble to go get the opportunity to face Brock Lesnar. And Roman Reigns just shows up. They even canceled the Elimination Chamber on SmackDown for the men. After Sheamus had gone out there and said, I'm coming to the Elimination Chamber to take out five guys. They had Sheamus actively promote he was going to be in the Elimination Chamber and what the WWE do? Canceled it for the Roman agenda. Awesome, right? And there's no politically driven garbage going into WrestleMania, right? WrestleMania is, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the worst shows in wrestling all year. Not even in WWE. All year. Now, even though he serves as the executive director, on Monday Night Raw, and isn't involved with anything on SmackDown. Paul Heyman is reportedly involved in the Goldberg Reigns WrestleMania program. This is according to a report from WrestleVotes, who outlined that Heyman has strong relationships with Reigns and Goldberg. WrestleVotes says this on Twitter, although the match is on the SmackDown side of the card, Paul Heyman will have some influence on the build and storyline for the Goldberg Reigns Universal title matchup at WrestleMania. Heyman shares very strong relationships with both, especially Bill Goldberg. End quote. Goldberg previously explained that Heyman was instrumental in bringing him back. In fact, the WWE Hall of Famer said that his comeback would not have happened if it was not for Paul Heyman. Goldberg also talked about how he trusts Heyman right now at this point in his career. So Chris Jericho actually also, uh, I don't know if this was, I don't know if you guys seen this. And it was in the notes. I put a little asterisk here. Chris Jericho actually took to social media to, I guess, praise the fact that Bill Goldberg won the Universal Championship from Bray Wyatt. And he says that's why uh, Goldberg is one of the best or something like that. And this is just how the business is. Get over it. It's good for it's best for business or good for. I don't know if he was being sarcastic or if he was uh, being honest. I don't know. I don't really know. So, of course, Bill Goldberg and Paul Heyman saw plenty of time on television together while Goldberg was feuding with Brock Lesnar in late 2016, all the way up to WrestleMania 33. But Paul Heyman, you know, I trust his his mind to maybe give us a decent match. It's not, it's not going to be as good as 
Goldberg and Roman Reigns, or it's not going to be good, as good as Goldberg and uh, Brock Lesnar, rather, but if Goldberg and Roman Reigns can pull out somewhere in the same vein as what they did in 2016 at WrestleMania 33, I still, I don't even think it's going to go over as well as Vince McMahon thinks it will. Honestly. I hope the match just doesn't shit the bed. I, I look at WrestleMania that this show, this this event has not had a true WrestleMania main event in so many years. Seriously. I think the last one honestly was Daniel Bryan winning the world championship. That was six years ago. And WWE has just gone so far off the track with giving you a match that really personifies what WrestleMania deep down really is. This is not it, folks. This is not it. Nothing on this card is WrestleMania worthy to me. Nothing. Nothing. So Paul Heyman is going to be working on Goldberg and Roman Reigns. I guess that's a positive. That might be the only positive coming out of this, but no matter if if it's Heyman or what he does with this match or how he produces the match or what ideas he comes up with, it's going to end in the same way. It's going to get booed out of the building. So Paul Heyman... He's obviously got an uphill battle here, but I don't think he's going to be able to overcome what is expected at WrestleMania, and that's all thanks to Vince McMahon. Paul Heyman is actually also scripting and working on the storyline for not only Reigns and Goldberg, but for Edge and Randy Orton. Now, a lot of what you are seeing played out on TV between Edge and Randy Orton and the storyline on Monday Night Raw, Beth Phoenix and Matt Hardy is coming from Paul Heyman. And sources say that Randy Orton and Edge have been giving a lot of their input as well on this storyline. The idea was to include a lot of real-life events in this story that played out this week when Orton talked about meeting Edge backstage with his father, Bob Orton, who took him to a show in 1999. At the time is when attempts were made to try and get Randy into the business. The story told by Orton is true, And other parts of the story are exaggerated with the idea being to make this as serious as possible to get the most out of Edge's first singles match back since his retirement in 2011. The story idea going into the match is that Edge will be wrestling against doctor's orders and he is risking paralysis if he steps in the ring with Randy Orton. They just announced on WWE social media that Edge will be on Raw to confront Randy Orton after what had happened with Beth Phoenix. So, again... This continues to be the best thing on Monday Night Raw. It continues to be the only thing worth anything on Monday Night Raw at this point. This is the only match. This is the only match on WrestleMania's card that has any sort of real emotion and real WrestleMania feelings. The only thing that really stands out is being WrestleMania worthy on this 36 card. So... Sources say that the attack on Beth Phoenix is not a sign that we will see more men attacking women on WWE TV. If it happens again, then it will be safe for big angles such as this one. And sources say that Beth will eventually get her revenge on Randy at some point. I am surprised we have not seen Christian back on WWE TV to really uh, sell this storyline further. We've seen Beth, we've seen Matt Hardy, we've seen everything that had happened concertos and Randy Orton being the legend killer Randy Orton, but Christian and Randy Orton had a fantastic feed back in the day for the World Heavyweight Championship, if you guys remember. I'm surprised that they have not brought back Christian. Maybe they will. Maybe that's still in the cards, and that's going to add another layer to what I already think is a fantastic storyline. So Edge was originally advertised for next week's show. There was rumors going around that he would be there. It was confirmed, like I said, in Washington, D.C., And they removed it from the arena website this week. And then WWE, as of Friday, they announced that Edge will be on Monday Night Raw. So, Heyman is working on the Goldberg Reigns feud, but he's also responsible for help building up the Drew McIntyre-Brock Lesnar match. And, obviously, he's going to work with Lesnar. And he's got his hands full with this feud between Orton and Edge. So, Paul Heyman has a lot of influence over the three biggest matches on this card. So it's going to be very interesting to keep an eye out on how everything unfolds here. Now, obviously, Edge and Orton is the better of all three. It's the most emotional. It's the best story being told right now. Drew McIntyre won the Royal Rumble and Lesnar is the champion. That's kind of soured a little bit as of late. There's no real intensity or emotion there. There's no real story there outside of 
Drew has waited all his life for this, and then he won the Royal Rumble. It's all the, it's all the story that's there. Reigns and Goldberg, there is no story there. So this is clearly Heyman's best story so far going into WrestleMania, or his best work going into WrestleMania. There's a lot of pressure on WWE to make things right after taking the title off The Fiend. They'll need an expert and a professional like Heyman to help build Reigns and Goldberg. This is what they do. Heyman's got to pick up the fucking mess and clean up the mess that WWE started because they needed to take the, the title off The Fiend just so that they fit their initiative and their propaganda into WrestleMania. So, I wonder if it doesn't go well, what happens to Paul Heyman? This could be a negative effect on Paul Heyman. This could be a strike on Paul Heyman. If Reigns and Goldberg doesn't end up being the way that Vince wants it to be, if the fans aren't invested in it as he expects them to be, especially with Heyman in charge, what's going to happen to Paul Heyman? Is that going to be a strike against Paul Heyman's work on Monday Night Raw? I don't know. I don't know. So he's really throwing himself into the fucking fire here, and he really does have an uphill battle, and I don't think it's something that he's going to overcome. So he's almost intentionally doing something that is automatically doomed to fail. I hope he I hope he knows what he's doing. I really do. So if this doesn't go well and fans continue to be angry and disappointed over the decision to take the title off the fiend, what, the, what does this mean for Paul Heyman? WWE has to make this Reigns-Goldberg storyline work. Otherwise, they'll all be back at square one. I said this over and over and over again. How many times in the last week? Edge and Randy Orton is the best thing on WWE television, main roster television as of right now. Paul Heyman might be overexerting himself this year. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I hope that whatever he does... He knows what he's doing. I hope it's really good and we enjoy it, but I can't see WWE overcoming this one whatsoever, especially at WrestleMania. Today's podcast is brought to you by my good friends over at The Ridge. The Ridge helps you guys carry what you need to every single day from streamlining how you carry cash and cards in their flagship Ridge wallet to their portable commuter charging backpacks. They want to make the most out of what you guys bring with you every single day. I've had the Ridge wallet for almost two years now. I take it with me everywhere I go. I love how portable it is. I love the size of it. I love how durable it is. I love the fact that I could carry everything I need, which is most important to me, in that wallet. And the best thing about the wallet that I love most is that it has RFID blocking quality, so I know my cards and my ID and all my information, my identity is safe and secure with The Ridge. The Ridge is so confident that you'll enjoy their product, they've made it as simple as possible. Free shipping so you guys can get it fast, free returns in case you don't like it, and in this case, I don't know why you wouldn't. And if you do like it, there's a lifetime guarantee. They also have a lot to be confident about. They got 30,000 five-star reviews for The Ridge Wallet. The Ridge is super durable, made from military-grade titanium and carbon fiber. It's proven to be bulletproof, waterproof, and chainsaw-proof. Guys, you can get yourself a Ridge wallet today by going to ridge.com slash script. You're going to use code SCRIPT at checkout, 10% off, and free shipping. Get yourself a new wallet and look stylish while you go to the bar and order yourself a cold beverage. Ridge.com slash script. Use code script, 10% off and free shipping. And I want to thank them for being a partner right here on Off The Script. You know, there are stories out there about Vince McMahon and you see what's happening during this WrestleMania season, how we all just dislike his vision for the WWE And we all say that he's out of touch and he doesn't know talent when he sees it anymore. It's one thing to say it. It's one thing to say it. And then you read something like this and you wonder to yourself, man, oh man, this guy's got to go. Everything you heard about him is 100% accurate. Everything you think about him is 100% accurate. Vince McMahon is already doubting Shayna Baszler versus Becky Lynch at WrestleMania 36. He's already doubting Shayna Baszler after one 
main roster match on Monday Night Raw. The only other main roster match that she had was because NXT was included in the Survivor Series and she was NXT Women's Champion against Becky and Bailey. Now it looks like Vince McMahon is uncertain about the push to turn Shayna Baszler into one of the top heels on the Raw brand. Why is that, Vince? Why is that? Because she doesn't have a perky ass? Because she doesn't have fake tits? Because she's not blonde? She doesn't look like Charlotte Flair, right? She doesn't look like Charlotte Flair. Yet you were so quick to push Ronda Rousey because she's Ronda Rousey, but if it's a friend of Ronda Rousey, forget about it. Forget about it. We don't want anything to do with anybody if she's not named Ronda Rousey. I really don't understand this. In the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer noted that there is uncertainty on Vince McMahon's feelings about Shayna Baszler, specifically the match she had with Kyrie Sane on this week's episode of Monday Night Raw. Meltzer noted that McMahon felt that Baszler and Sane and the match did not get the desired reaction. He felt that Baszler was not coming off like a WrestleMania headliner. Baszler is one of the people who is getting a massive push because of Paul Heyman as he sees her as someone who can be a monster heel. So Vince McMahon felt that Baszler versus Sane's match did not get the desired reaction and he felt that Baszler was not coming off like a WrestleMania headliner. Vince, let me tell you something heart to heart, JD to CEO. Okay, do you watch NXT? No, you don't. And if someone says that you do, or if you tell me you do, or if you weren't one of your fucking cronies who's giving you a hand job underneath the fucking round table in Stamford, Connecticut says you do, I know they're lying. I know they are full of shit. Because if he watched NXT, then he would see someone in Shayna Baszler who undoubtedly could lead an entire division. This is a woman that was in a division, a women's division, that was the best women's division on the planet. And now, because of one match on Monday Night Raw, you don't think she's WrestleMania worthy? You didn't get the desired results that you expected? Well, with the reports of Vince McMahon rewriting the script, on Monday Night Raw. Maybe he didn't realize that he put Shayna Baszler in a match with Kyrie Sane. He put Shayna Baszler, who he wants to be this massive heel, on Monday night in a match against Kyrie Sane, who is a heel in New York City. Do you take your own people in New York to be fucking stupid? Did you not think the New York crowd would see right through what you were doing? How could one of the smartest crowds in the wrestling world possibly give a shit when you got a heel versus a heel? Who the fuck are you supposed to get over in that situation? Why didn't Shayna Baszler come off as a WrestleMania headliner? Why didn't you get the desired results that you wanted? Maybe you should have put her against a fucking baby face. Even at that point, who on this roster is a baby face that people legitimately give a shit about? This is all you're doing. Your neglect to push the women prominently on this show is now coming to fruition. Karma is coming back to bite you in the cock. Get with the program. Your neglect in the overall division. Your neglect to push anyone not named Android. Flair is now coming back to bite you in the fucking cock. And you have nobody to blame but yourself. Who on this roster do we legitimately give a shit about? Asuka and Kairi Sane have fallen from grace to a point where you tried to give Asuka some credibility going into this match with Becky Lynch at the Royal Rumble, and it just wasn't there. 
It wasn't there. It took you 12 months to revisit the fucking feud. Kyrie saying this woman is on her way out, hopefully so, rightfully so. This woman was a gem in NXT. She is a shell of her former self on Monday Night Raw. Natalia. I'd rather watch paint dry than fucking watch Natalia wrestle. Charlotte Flair, I don't know whether she's a human being, a fucking flotation device, uh, a fucking Barbie doll that's hanging on the shelf at Walmart with all the fucking plastic that she's wielding. What the fuck is she? Is she human at this point? She's made of metal and steel with a fucking blonde wig at this fucking point. Becky Lynch, yes. Yes, someone who we love so dearly coming out of WrestleMania. Someone who we wanted to be the face of the women's division is now a fucking comedy act. A comedy act, Vince. Give me a break. How the fuck can you take Kyrie Sane and Shayna Baszler, who have wrestled on multiple occasions in NXT, and somehow fuck it up? Why is NXT always doing something better than what you're doing on the main roster? Is it because you got better people working in NXT? Competent people working in NXT, putting these matches together, producing these matches, going over the matches step by step? Who the fuck do you have working on this show that produced that fucking garbage? Who? I'd love to know. A name? A source? Something. I I don't understand the logic behind... Why he didn't get the desired reaction? What are you out of your fucking mind? How can one how can one place do it right and you do it so wrong? How could you fucking kill this woman after three weeks? Meanwhile, NXT Triple H had Shayna for two years plus and booked her perfectly. Perfectly. Four weeks, less than four weeks, and this woman is already dead. This woman is fucking dead going into WrestleMania. Paul Heyman clearly sees the talent. Vince, on the other hand, he wants to push who he wants to push. Now, another thing, and this might be a tough pill to swallow, you fucking Becky Lynch bots. This might be a tough pill to swallow. You ready for this one? How the fuck can Shayna Baszler be over as this fucking downright nasty bitch in the women's division? When you got someone like Becky Lynch coming out as if she's leading the fucking Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus into town, how could Shayna Baszler be looked at as a legitimate threat when Becky Lynch is coming out there dressed as a fucking clown every single week? If Becky Lynch doesn't take people to be serious like Shayna Baszler, if she doesn't take Shayna Baszler to be a threat or serious, don't you think that the crowd is going to think the same way as Becky Lynch is thinking? If Becky Lynch thinks that Shayna is a joke and she's taking Becky lightly, then the fans are going to take Becky lightly. If Becky took Shayna to be serious and was legitimately threatened by Shayna Baszler, and we've seen some intensity, and we've seen some blood, and we've seen some fisticuffs, and we've seen some handcuffs, and we've seen some fucking police vehicles taking these women away, then people would buy into it. What you're doing here is making Shayna a joke at the expense of Becky Lynch, and you're already saying you don't see a desired result, you don't see a WrestleMania headliner in Shayna Baszler. No one's going to see a fucking WrestleMania headliner until you have Becky Lynch maimed in the middle of the ring at WrestleMania. So Vince, here's a fucking clue. Be patient. Be patient. But everything you're doing as far as these women go, you're making it come off this way. And then you're blaming Shayna Baszler. The fuck does Shayna Baszler have to do with any of this? She doesn't have a goddamn thing to do with any of this. This is all Vince McMahon's fabricated fucking mentality. So Meltzer said this, and I quote, and I'd love for someone to refute anything that I just stated. Did I stutter? No, I didn't, motherfucker. No, I didn't. I watched this woman for two years be booked brilliantly in NXT. How the fuck can you take this woman from NXT and already say, eh, eh, I I don't get it. I really, I'm at a loss of words for that mentality, that line of thinking. Meltzer says this, if Baszler doesn't win, 
That wouldn't bode well for her since it would make twice that Vince McMahon had, has changed her mind or has changed his mind on Becky Lynch, on Shayna Baszler. I can't even fucking speak. I'm so heated. Baszler was the original pick to win the Royal Rumble, only to have McMahon a week out change plans to Charlotte Flair and have Baszler win the chamber. But there was negativity and uncertainty regarding Vince McMahon's reaction to Baszler's match with Kyrie Sane on Raw, not getting the desired reaction and Baszler not coming off like a WrestleMania headliner. She didn't come off like a WrestleMania headliner for the reasons that I gave you. Anyone who watched her run in NXT knows what I'm talking about, knows that she can lead a division, knows that she's a badass, knows that she can cut a promo, knows that she is a star. She dominated the women's division for two years, for two years, and she had matches with Kyrie Sane that were great. Matches with everybody that ended up being great. They didn't book this woman in feuds and we were disappointed with anything. I don't understand this shit. Baszler will be the women's uh, winner coming out of the Elimination Chamber. No question. No question. On Sunday. This will determine the number one contender for Becky Lynch's Raw Women's Championship at WrestleMania. It is scheduled. Right now, it is still currently scheduled, but if Vince McMahon changes his mind on Baszler and Baszler does not win on Sunday, then it would be the second time that he has changed his mind on Shayna. Meltzer said that Baszler was the original pick to win the, the Women's Royal Rumble match, only for McMahon to change it to Charlotte Flair just one week before the show. Now, on Thursday afternoon, Kane Velasquez, who I hope stays as far away from WrestleMania as humanly possible, noted that he ran into Ronda Rousey at the WWE headquarters in Stamford, Connecticut. Rousey hasn't appeared on WWE TV since last April because she wanted to start a family with Travis Brown. There hasn't been any recent talk about Rousey appearing at this year's WrestleMania, but WWE would like to have her on next year's show in Los Angeles. Of course, that would be when her contract is set to expire. And would welcome her back with open arms if she feels ready to step in the ring much sooner than that. Rousey's current deal expires next WrestleMania. Since WWE is in talks with ESPN+, and I'm sure those talks are now heavily in discussion, ESPN+, being the home of WWE pay-per-view, would only lead to Rousey coming back sooner rather than later. It would make sense for them to get Velasquez and Rousey Back on WWE TV as soon as possible. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Being that the women's elimination chamber is overly... I could absolutely see this happening. Imagine if the idea going into the chamber is Shayna Baszler and and it's this predictable outcome that Shayna is undoubtedly going to win. Can you imagine if Ronda Rousey comes in and takes out, I don't know, could be Natalia, it could be Liv Morgan... Could be Sarah Logan. What the fuck is Sarah Logan doing in the Elimination Chamber? Oh, they're they're building up a feud between the Riot Squad. There's not one human soul that gives a shit about that. Imagine if Ronda Rousey takes out somebody in the Elimination Chamber and opts to enter the Elimination Chamber on Sunday and wins the Elimination Chamber. It comes down to Ronda and Shayna. And Vince, thinking the way he does here, has Ronda and Shayna as the final two. And Ronda ends up winning the Royal Rumble and we get Ronda Rousey versus Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. Imagine that. Now, it's not Ronda versus Charlotte. They went in a different direction with Charlotte Flair. And I don't know what's going to happen in that championship match. But imagine just for the sake of getting this show to be bigger than it is right now. What's going to sell to ESPN? Ronda? Ronda versus Becky? Or Shayna? Versus Becky. When I mention to people who watch UFC, oh, Ronda Rousey, everybody knows who Ronda Rousey is. Oh, Shayna Baszler has been in the WWE. She's just as good, if not better, than Ronda Rousey in every aspect. You know what I get? Who? Who's that? I never heard of her before. That's what I get. Now, if you're Vince McMahon, he's already done this once. The reason why Goldberg, the reason why Go, one of the reasons why, we, we already talked about this, one of the reasons why Goldberg won the Universal Championship is because he's trying to sell this shit to ESPN. Goldberg versus Roman Reigns is much better than Roman Reigns versus The Fiend if you're selling this to ESPN, okay? Reason why The Undertaker and AJ Styles is a thing. 
that's going to sell to ESPN and the casuals on ESPN+. Plus. Ronda Rousey versus Becky Lynch is going to sell. Ronda Rousey is going to sell. Maybe that's why Becky Lynch is acting the way that she does. Because she doesn't look at Shayna as a threat. Maybe she's acting the way she does because Shayna is not going to be her opponent. And then when Ronda comes back, then Becky Lynch will go back to shedding all this fucking comedic clown-like garbage and finally start being booked as Becky Lynch, the Becky Lynch that we know. And how shitty would that be for Shayna Baszler? What did I say, folks? Triple H creates and Vince McMahon kills. Awful, awful, awful mentality. How could you sour on Shayna Baszler already when it is your fault? I don't get it. How would anybody expect Shayna to be over when she's in a match with a heel that nobody cares for? When she herself is a heel? How can anyone care and take Shayna as a threat when Becky Lynch who is very influential, doesn't even take Shayna Baszler to be a threat. You did the whole biting angle. And then that went away. And now Becky Lynch is like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 I'm a clown. Shayna Baszler's nothing to me. All right? You didn't even sell the effects of the fucking bite. You did it for one week, and then you went right back to treating her like a fucking clown. She is one of the worst things on WWE television right now. The way that she's acting. So why would anyone expect Shayna to look like a true WrestleMania main event superstar if Becky Lynch doesn't think that Shayna Baszler is a threat? Please. I'm tired. I'm tired of being so logical, man. I'm fucking, I'm worn out from being so logical. How does nobody come up with this fucking logic? Why does everybody just overlook this shit? Enough for the fucking justification of this garbage. WrestleMania is fucking terrible. Absolutely, I'm sick to my stomach over the fucking build. We have zero build going into Sunday. We have zero interest going into WrestleMania. The only thing I'm fucking interested in is Edge and Randy Orton. Nothing else on this card even speaks to me as being WrestleMania worthy. Give me a fucking break, folks. Give me a break. You got half, you got 70% of this roster without WrestleMania spots. This is WrestleMania to you? This card should have been fleshed out by Survivor Series. And here we are, four weeks away, and we still are ripping up scripts and fucking not pushing certain superstars after it was rumored that these superstars would be at WrestleMania. Now you're backtracking on certain superstars. Get with the program. WWE is a shell of its former self. They don't give a fuck about their talent. They don't give a fuck about you. They want WrestleMania to make multi-millions and millions and millions of dollars by selling the pay-per-view rights to ESPN, and they will do whatever they have to do to sell this shit as the most political and mainstream garbage that you could possibly fucking consume. Shayna Baszler is not going to fall into that category. I guarantee you that Ronda Rousey somehow makes it to WrestleMania. When we didn't think Ronda was going to be there, all I needed to see was her being at the headquarters in Stanford, Connecticut. That's it. What is she doing there? What is she doing there? She's there now to talk about next year's WrestleMania? We didn't even get through this year's WrestleMania? Give me a fucking break. Vince is trying to fucking lobby her to come back now because he doesn't want Shayna against Becky Lynch. Fucking bullshit. Daniel Bryan. Speaking of someone who should already have WrestleMania plans, Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania. According to WrestlingNews.co and their head guy, Paul Davis, there's been talks about Daniel Bryan renewing his rivalry with Sheamus at WrestleMania 36. For those that remember, back at WrestleMania 27, Sheamus and Bryan battled each other for the United States Championship on the kickoff show. One year later, Sheamus surprised Daniel Bryan with AJ Lee in the opening match of WrestleMania 28 to win the World Heavyweight Championship in just 18 seconds. That last match was a sore spot for literally everybody. With neither of these WWE superstars on the card yet, WWE may try to sell the idea that they have unfinished business. Davis is reporting that Bryan has a lot of pull backstage and his recent feuds and rivalries have been ones of his choosing. This includes recent spots with Drew Gulak, who might be friend Sheamus, perhaps referencing the loss to say Daniel Bryan is on the verge of becoming that big of a disappointment again. Now, Daniel Bryan said this on Twitter, and I quote, 
I love Drew Gulak's hard-nosed Matt style and have been wanting to wrestle him for years. With all the shakeups in WWE, maybe now is our chance. Hashtag Gulak vs. Brian. Hashtag WWE. Hashtag SmackDown on Fox. So that's what he said. And then Drew Gulak said, Welcome to SmackDown on Fox at Daniel Bryan. So that's what he said there. So that really doesn't give anybody a glimpse as to what Daniel Bryan is doing at WrestleMania. A defeat at the hands of Sheamus could lead to an eventual match between Gulak and Bryan. The idea right now is that Bryan's old loss to Sheamus in 18 seconds means he'll want another chance to erase the memory of that night. Sheamus will probably happily take him up on the challenge because he seems to be getting a kick out of beating up weaker opponents. And with Gulak pushing the idea that Bryan is struggling to regain his mojo, Sheamus might see this as an opportunity. It's hard to imagine Sheamus losing considering the way WWE's pushing him after his return. And as everyone knows, Bryan seems fairly impervious to wins and losses. Whether he puts Sheamus over or not, the WWE Universe never thinks less of Daniel Bryan. I could absolutely see that happening, but then I ask, what, what are you going to do with Braun Strowman and the Intercontinental Championship? I guarantee you, if this is the reason for Brian to wrestle Sheamus, I absolutely guarantee you that Braun Strowman will undoubtedly defend that Intercontinental title against Baron Corbin at WrestleMania. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. And then we will have not one, but two bathroom breaks. We got that... And then we got the fucking Universal Championship match between Roman Reigns and Bill Goldberg. Unbelievable. Because what else is Braun Strowman going to do? He's going to fucking take care of Shinsuke Nakamura, Sami Zayn, and Cesaro. Three on one. And they're not going to book the match after he buried all three at the Elimination Chamber again at WrestleMania. So what are they going to do? Maybe Baron Corbin, for all his hard work, maybe for all his hard work he did against Roman Reigns, maybe they gift him an Intercontinental Championship match against Braun Strowman. And who knows, he may be the new Intercontinental Champion. I don't know. But it certainly looks like Brian and Sheamus are headed for a match at WrestleMania. For what? What is it going to be for? I don't know. Who cares about avenging wins and losses as if WWE likes to revisit history and let you know about what happened in the past, right? Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? I would have rathered Brian in a higher profile match, and I would have rathered Sheamus in a match with Braun Strowman. I think instead of Braun Strowman and Baron Corbin, which might put all of us to sleep, it might legitimately put 80,000 people to sleep at WrestleMania. Instead of that, I would much rather see Sheamus knock off Braun Strowman's head and win the Intercontinental title, a title that he has never won in his entire career. That's the story. Seems like WWE is doing everything this WrestleMania season to avoid stories. But this is WWE. I'm not surprised. Kevin Owens at WrestleMania 36. Meltzer is reporting that WWE is planning on having Owens involved with another former NXT champion at WrestleMania 36. Meltzer is reporting that Kevin Owens will share the ring with Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. However, this may be either a singles match or Seth and Murphy versus KO and a mystery partner. One match will involve Rollins. It could be a singles match with Owens. And as of 10 days ago, that was the plan. It could be Rollins and Murphy winning the titles back from the Street Profits, defending those titles against Owens and a partner of his choosing. Which, to me... Makes all the sense in the world, because that was the story. What did I just say? It's, it seems like WWE is actively trying to avoid telling stories at WrestleMania. Why did the Street Profits win the Raw Tag Team titles? When the story of the Tag Team titles was Rollins and Murphy, and then Owens and Joe taking the titles. Now, unless the Profits won the titles on Monday and drop the titles back to Rollins and Murphy. I, I, I don't know what Rollins does at WrestleMania and why I should care. What good is a tag team match if the fucking titles aren't on the line? What makes you think I'm going to care about Rollins and Owens at WrestleMania? Where does that leave Murphy? Why does Murphy have to be actively le- left off the WrestleMania card? Why does Joe have to actively be left off the WrestleMania card? I don't get it. 
I don't really understand this. The tag team titles should have remained on Rollins and Murphy. The Street Profits did nothing to get a deserved opportunity. Rollins and Murphy should have dropped the titles to Owens and Joe at WrestleMania. I cannot be the only one who has fucking a brain this WrestleMania season. Now, what are the Prophets going to do and who are they going to defend the titles against? Do you care? Who gives a shit what Kevin Owens does now? Who? I don't. I certainly don't. I don't give a shit what Rollins does. I don't give a shit what Murphy does. I don't give a shit about this feud. Period. It's over. It's over. I don't know. I still, I don't know what they're fighting over. Kevin Owens plans at WrestleMania. Asterisk, who cares? Michelle McCool, the Undertaker's wife, is not happy with the WWE. Really, neither am I. Neither am I. Former Divas champion took to social media to express her feeling about her historical impact as a WWE wrestler instead of being known as just being the Undertaker's wife. This is what you get, honey. You managed, or well, not managed, you married one of the greatest in the history of this business. Anything that you've done previously will pale in comparison to the fact that you're married to The Undertaker. Fans and employees of the WWE think the same way. No, not to take anything away from Candace Michelle, um, Candace Michelle, Michelle McCool, Jesus Christ, Not to take anything away from Michelle McCool. That's a fucking unfair comparison. Michelle McCool was so much better than Candace Michelle. But to take nothing away from Michelle McCool, she was actually very good at what she did. You know, she was in that whole Divas era. But if you took Michelle McCool and put her in the women's division now, I honestly think she would fit like a glove in the women's division. And a much needed fit. I think what she brings to the table is what this division needs, honestly. So if there's anybody that you want to look to as being a, uh, I would say, a Hall of Famer or a a piece of the past that you want to bring back, just like Beth Phoenix. Beth Phoenix looks like she hasn't missed a step. Michelle McCool would do the same thing. I really do. She was in that first Women's Royal Rumble. She looked great. She looked great. Now, she thinks the WWE doesn't feel that way. It all started when WWE celebrated Women's History Month in March. WWE's website released a photo gallery of 45 of their most notable talents to win a WWE or NXT championship. Now, first of all, first of all, who releases a list of 45? That's not a round number at all. It's either 25, you'll do 40, or 50. So whoever was in charge of this photo gallery, you couldn't add five more women to make it a nice even round 50 and prevent yourself from looking like a fucking idiot, right? Who the fuck works for this company? McCool was not featured in the gallery and took issue with it. Thus, she wrote the following on Twitter, and I quote, Real talk when you've put up with more in the past than anyone would believe simply because I am the Undertaker's wife. Have rarely been mentioned for making any contribution to the women's revolution, but wow, not even top 45. So she even tweeted that she is a four-time women's divas champion and the 2010 Pro Wrestling Illustrated Woman of the Year. McCool followed up with another tweet where she noted that her take wasn't about the women that were featured in the gallery. She says, and I quote, For the record, not a shot at any girl on this list. Respect to all. Just felt like the urge to speak up and remind all, know your worth. Don't let anyone tell you differently. Afterthought, nobody, nope. You are worthy. Hashtag real talk. Hashtag still Undertaker's wife. Now, The Undertaker rarely uses social media. The fact that he has a social media and a Twitter and an Instagram is just... It it still doesn't sit well with me, but it's 2020. Uh, I'm not surprised with what we're seeing in the world today. Now, The Undertaker Undertaker, rarely uses Twitter to voice his disapproval with anything. I mean, mean, we've seen him on fucking YouTube in a promo with Dr. Disrespect. 
you know, over a fucking Fortnite stream. That changed when his wife tweeted about this top 45 list. Earlier in that day, McCool commented that she was upset and she was upset over this 45 picture photo gallery. And then The Undertaker got involved. He says, too little, too late. Unbelievable. Why did he say that? Well, WWE tweeted out an updated article. The Undertaker responded because the WWE fixed their error after Michelle McCool tweeted out her disapproval. They say, and I quote, we've made some pretty cool updates to this Women's History Month gallery. See which trailblazers we've added. At Michelle McCool and at, or hashtag, Bull Nakano. So The Undertaker tweeted, too little, too late. Unbelievable. He did not seem impressed that WWE realized that they were a bunch of fucking idiots. Maybe next time you won't go about disappointing the fucking Undertaker. Think about that. Think about who she's married. Maybe we should include Michelle McCool on here. Yes, now we got The Undertaker fucking looking at all of you wanting to fucking take your souls and dig some fucking holes. What a bunch of fucking idiots in their social media department. Man. How stupid can you be? Ridiculous. Finally. So I got to get out of here and I got to get ready for SmackDown. It's four o'clock on a Friday afternoon. And I got a great SmackDown episode headlined by the NWO tonight. Dayton location for Money in the Bank. Oh, joy. Money in the Bank even has lost its appeal over the years. The Dayton location for this year's Money in the Bank pay-per-view has been announced. The company will hold the show May 10th from the Royal Farms Arena in Baltimore, Maryland. The event is listed on the Royal Farms Arena Facebook page and ticketing website. Now, we have an updated list of WWE pay-per-views this year so far, and it is as follows. March 8th, Sunday, Philadelphia holds the Elimination Chamber. WrestleMania 36, April 5th, May 20th, or May, what, May 10th or May, May 10th, it says. May 10th, Money in the Bank, July 19th, Extreme Rules in San Jose, California, August 23rd, SummerSlam in Boston, and the Survivor Series is going to be in November. That will take place on November 22nd per Wrestle Votes, Dallas, Texas. WWE was just in Houston for the Royal Rumble, and they're going back to Texas in Houston, or not in Houston, but in Dallas for the Survivor Series pay-per-view. They tweet out local new uh, location news here. Survivor Series 2020 will be held November 22nd in Dallas, Texas. No venue was announced for the Survivor Series as of this writing. It will be interesting to see what WWE books as far as the location goes for the final big show of 2020. There you go. I'm sure you guys are so excited to be planning your wrestling trips based off WWE's lackluster pay-per-view calendar. I want to see if they do sell their pay-per-view rights, how the pay-per-view build is going to fare, being that we have to spend 70 fucking dollars for this bullshit. I want to see how the build is going to happen on Raw and SmackDown. I wonder if WWE is going to take these builds to be serious. And compared to what we're seeing for Sunday's show, it's pretty much non-existent. They can't go about booking the show like they are the Elimination Chamber now. Who's going to pay $70 for a non-existent build in a card that we don't even know yet? Give me a break. Guys, I'm getting out of here. This is your Off The Script This Weekend, episode 316. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on that bell for all notifications. Twitter, at JD from NY206. That's on Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you guys check out all the other videos that you might have missed down below, including yesterday's Off The Script and SmackDown's review as of Friday night and everything else that was on the channel this week. Links are down below in the description of this very video. Make sure you guys support the podcast via Patreon, patreon.com slash JD from NY206. If you guys want to go get your t-shirts, the JD YWC Messiah is still on sale, bonfire.com. Link is down in the description below. And make sure you guys go and check out my boys over at the Ridge, ridge.com slash script. Use code script at checkout for 10% off and free shipping. Guys, I will see you right back here tomorrow for the live stream in the afternoon. We'll go over the Elimination Chamber preview predictions 
And I'll be back on Sunday night after the Chamber for your official review of the entire show. Until then, hit that thumbs up. I am JD. Thank you guys so much for supporting Off The Script. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the live stream, Talking Elimination Chamber. See you guys then.